G'day Off Trackers. Welcome back to Off Track HQ. That means it's time again for Ash. What are we? Ash. Shit, I got it wrong. Wrong person behind the camera. Well, as hot as Ash though. <laughs> so Lloyd's actually back. I think we'll leave that in the video. <laughs> Lloyd's back, so he's back behind the camera. What are we doing this week? Mate, you said you wanted blooper B-rolls right there at the very beginning <laughs> is blooper B-rolls. We're doing a review. We are. So this week we're doing, I've actually had a lot of people who know that I've got this and have been pushing me to do it for the last, I don't know, month. So sorry it's taking me so long to do, but I'm finally doing the review on the 3000 watt inverter by Hardcore. So to let you know why I went such a big one, yes, people are going to be sitting there going, man, you only have a 135 amp hour battery. There's no way that can run a 3000. Correct, it can't. But we've got a caravan on order. I will be swapping it out. The reason I want 3000, if you want to run a dual induction cooktop, 2000 doesn't do it. 2500 doesn't do it. You need about 2700 and above. So I saw Hardcore does this one and I picked it up and went, let's chuck that in. So what I'll do, I'll sort of show you what comes in the box with it. What comes in the box. So you get this lead, power lead, which Everyone's sitting there going, why would you have a 240 lead? Lloyd and I sort of thought the same thing. Hey, should we talk about this thing? I've just seen in the uh, GoPro my reflection. Should we talk about this weird caterpillar on my lid? Yes, Ted Lasso is currently doing the video. <laughs> so, did this for basically a gag at work, but everyone seems to like it and telling me to keep it. So, comment below, guys. What do you think of the uh, moustache? Should it stay or go? Mate, you have to overlay an image of Ted Lasso. <laughs> I can do that. Do it. Okay, so we'll push on. So yeah, 240, I'll, I'll touch on this later what, actually no, I'll tell you now what it does. So this here is designed, so you have two different types of inverters. You have an AC changeover switch, which is what Lloyd has in his caravan, where as soon as you plug into a caravan park into 240 power, it basically runs the power through the inverter, but not actually using the power. So you get the full capacity of whatever the caravan park output is, your other option is you basically have an inverter that can't do anything and you can't plug it into 240. You have to have two separate, uh, basically, power points. You have to have GPOs coming off this or GPOs that go off the caravan power. Then Hardcore have come up with another way of doing it where they give you this power lead. You plug it in to the, into the power at the back and then you plug that into your mains power. And what it does, it actually bumps this up to a 3,700 watt inverter. So you get an extra 700 watts of power, which is pretty cool. So if you want to work around without having to spend the money uh, that you do for your bigger ones, as we have a bit of wind going on, we're trying to also film this really quickly before the rain comes. So yeah, if you want to work around, because normally you're what, sort of two grand for an AC changeover one? Yep. Well, my, my Victron 3,000 watt, they're over two thousand dollars yeah so you're a lot more money to have have a yep. changeover switch versus this one i'll put the pricing because it was a couple of months ago that i got it i think it was somewhere <laughs> around one four but i will put the latest price in oh are we going to be running from the rain no we're all right keep rolling nah it's getting harder all right we'll cut we'll be back in a second so the rain's passed for a little bit hopefully <laughs> water and electricity probably not the best mix eh no i don't think so especially not the uh this isn't 12 volt you're going to crank it up yeah so yeah, unfortunately guys, there may be a little bit of stopping and starting with this, but we'll try and get it through and I'll try and make it look good in the editing. So I was talking about that uh, thing they give you. So yeah, 2,700 watts, you'll bump it up to when you plug it into mains power. Next really cool thing they give you is this little, uh, I guess you'd call it a controller. And they do give you an extension cord as well. So you can extend it and put anywhere in your van or That's a remote, isn't it? Yeah, controller. Yeah. Rem Remember, controller is short for remote controller. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> Aussies, lazy. Very lazy. So, and that's really cool. You can, you can legitimately turn it off on there and cut the power from it. I did have to check with Hardcore how to do it. So you've got to hold it for three seconds because I was trying to turn it off and I couldn't get it to actually completely shut off. But if you do hold it, it will kill all power to the inverter and then you can turn it back on from this. So really cool feature. It'll also tell you how much battery you got left and how much load you're currently using on it. And you can put it on eco mode. So now that we've spoke, spoken about eco mode, I guess Lloyd, you're the one with the stats. So we'll run through some of the stats that this has. Operating temperature, what's that Lloyd? So the operating temperature between minus 20 and positive 40. So the positive 40 in summer could get a little bit interesting, especially like if it's in a canopy 
or in the back of a car. But I guess how often are you going to be using the inverter without doors and stuff open? So you're probably going to have airflow. You will drop the temperature of the car before you use it and the temperature of the canopy. So I, I don't think 40 is a big one. I would have loved to have seen a bigger number there, but I think 40 is probably sufficient. The minus 20 is pretty incredible. I, I would think minus five, like a fridge, minus 20 is really good. So if you're going to the Vic High Country, no problems whatsoever. No dramas. Uh, the next one is what it runs without any draw. So, so one one point six amps. Yeah, one point six amps. So that means if you just got it switched on and you're not actually using it, which would be a pretty stupid thing to do if you're not using it, probably just turn it off or put it on eco mode. Uh, it will constantly draw one point six amps. The next one is if you hit that eco mode button, what will that give point you? Point two amps. So that's nothing. So if you chuck it on eco mode, what that does is it basically really brings the power down and I believe it's about a three second delay in between it actually engaging. So say you turn on, I don't know, a induction cooktop. So you've got it permanently turned on, the induction cooktop plugged into this. It'll be about three seconds before the induction cooktop gets power, then it'll power up as per normal. That's all the eco mode does. It puts it in sort of a sleep mode. Yep. So I think that's a really cool function and that rating that they have there is actually really low compared to all the competitors which is one of the reasons I went for it. And this thing saved me literally this week. So my fridge stopped working on 12 volt and had to be, I had to run it off 240 and I was had to go, I had to go to Brisbane for a meeting. So I just quickly grabbed the inverter, plugged it in, chuck, chucked the fridge into 240. And for 24 hours, I ran this, no noise. There's no fan that kicked in where Lloyd, you've got the Kings 3000 and you said you can't use it at night and sleep, can you? Yeah, I've had it under my bed. Um, I've changed it out now, but I couldn't run that. As soon as those fans come on, it's um, yeah, it's pretty noisy. And it comes on probably two to three minutes on, not even full load. Like if I'm boiling a kettle or running a toaster, it'll come on. Versus this one, as I said, I haven't had the fans come on yet. So whether or not it just has really super quiet fans or it's just more efficient at inverting the power. So rate it for that. The other thing I want to touch on is the build quality. This is the first time you've seen it, Lloyd. How does that look compared to your King's one? Yeah, it's pretty chunky. But it just feels like that's all metal. That's not plastic. That's literally yep. aluminium. That's that's plastic, but it's actually a really solid plastic. The whole thing is really well designed. Having the power actually protected and out of the elements is really good. So I rate the build of this is phenomenal. I was not expecting that. The 3000 watt also gives you one power outlet, and then the other one's designed for hard wiring. So you can get a Sparky or if you used to have an electrical background like me, just do it yourself, uh, which I shouldn't be recommending. So don't do that unless if you have some sort of electrical skills, you can wire straight into that. The big plus that I was looking for, it has a safety switch. So this helps you not electrocute yourself essentially. Uh, it should cut off really, really quickly. I think it's like 0.2 seconds it's meant to shut off. As well as you've got your on and off button, which is really cool as well. So really rate it for you guys, I would recommend this. What I'll do now, I'll plug it in and we'll see what I've got hanging around in the cupboards here in the camp kitchen to fire it up and see how much power it actually uses. Should have brought it, some toast. Yeah, toaster that'll do. 750 watts, so that's okay for me to use on the battery. So I'll get this all plugged in guys and we'll come back. Okay, so all plugged in now. So what I thought I'd show you is the screen on here, what you get to see, uh, as well as the actual controller. So if we look at this one first, Lloyd, so it's showing that you got full battery at the top and there's currently no load. So if I now flick the kettle down, you'll see one bar should come on on the load and the battery does drop down just because you're pulling current from it. And then you will get the fan that's literally engaged and turned off. So doesn't need much to run a kettle, uh, to run a toaster. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'll also have now the same test. I'll do it on the phone and we'll get to see the actual stats. We've got here that it's pulling one amp. So do you remember what it said it was using? It was 1.6, wasn't it? Yeah, was it 1.6 or 1.2? 1 1.6, I thought, for the 3000. 1.6, you're right. So there you go. One amp, so it's well lower. Then that's massive. 0 0.6 of an amp is a huge difference. So good on them for over allowing because one amp is stuff all so now we'll turn it on and we're at 
Whoa, we're chewing the power. We're at two amps. Look at it go, discharge it to, oh, there we go. Now we're going up, 60, 69 amps. So that's really cool. You can actually see it on this app. And again, that's because I've got the hardcore battery. So I recommend their battery, as you guys know. Uh, and now what we'll do, I'll cancel it. So now we'll chuck it onto eco mode and we'll see what amps it uses. So that's eco on. So far we're at zero. Can we get any movement at all? No, nah, we're sitting on zero. So I guess every now and then it must use a little bit of power. But at the moment I'm getting that it's using no power. We'll put the, uh, we'll put the toaster on, see how long it takes to engage. One, two. Yeah, so it was about three seconds it took to engage. So eco mode, 100% works. Now we'll turn it off, see if it drops back down to nothing. Down to nothing. Perfect. So I reckon that's a massive win. Absolutely no power being used. So you could legitimately have it permanently wired up and switched on and just use your shit as you need it. So to sum up, guys, I heavily recommend it. It is a pure sine wave inverter, but I didn't think I really need to say it. Everything these days should be pure sine wave. I, I, I can't floor it. It hasn't let me down once. Hardcore just seems to be a brand that is just quality. I've had nothing fail where as you've seen, when, when I have things go wrong, I will tell you guys that it is crap. But honestly, Hardcore just keeps pumping out really good stuff. And again, I've bought this all of my own money. I'm not getting paid to do this. I'm not being given it for free. This one I've bought myself and happy to suggest to you guys that this is an inverter you could look at if you're happy with maximum 3,700 watts when you're plugged into AC. If you want to go full capacity, which... I've been trying to find out what that is to see how much you're actually missing out on, but I can't find it anywhere because it's literally all dependent on each caravan park, how much power they want to give to each site. So you may not even get more than 3,700 uh, amps from a caravan park. Uh, what, sorry. But yeah, so recommend it. As always, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know about the moustache, whether or not you rate it or not. It's staying. <laughs> there you go. It's saying, yeah, it really helps the channel grow. And honestly, I've really, really enjoyed everyone commenting and give me the good feedback. And you're all saying I actually will respond to you and thank you for it. So till next time, see ya. Nothing from Lloyd? Oh, nothing. Donuts. Sorry, oh. man. Au revoir. Well, I thought it was Haru. Wasn't yours Haru? No, that might have been Ashes. Oh, that was Ashes. I like au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs> see ya. It's very fancy. <laughs>